exactly. <laughs> uh, there was another big signing yesterday. We were talking a lot about Calvin Ridley and just how he was hanging in the wind, if you will, with the, with the Jaguars. We found a new home, and it's not in Jacksonville. Calvin Ridley heading to a division rival in the Tennessee Titans four-year $92 million contract. That's more like it. 50 million of that <clears throat> is guaranteed. There you go, Jay. So oh, the Tennessee beautiful. offense now looks vastly different uh, when the season starts compared to what they started working with last year. They added Calvin Ridley. Tony Pollard also comes over from the Dallas Cowboys to fill this massive void that was left by Derrick Henry. And Tajay Spears had a great end to his season last year. And now is Will Levis the guy we will see? And then we all know D-Hop last offseason signed. Um, that big deal for them to go. So that's what the offense looks like as of now. What do we think of the Titans now, what it looks like, Jason, with Calvin, but without the King? As soon as I saw this signing, I thought of you instantly because yesterday you were opining about no state taxes. No state tax. And Calvin really decided to go to Tennessee from Florida. He's, all right, I'm going to make sure all of that is there. <laughs> Whenever there's a signing in, our guy Rap Sheet, he's posting it, and it has things like stunner, like no one expected this. We have the surprise team bombshell. And you get excited because Calvin really is a guy that has a number one wide receiver. You also put him next to DeAndre Hopkins. And you're like, all right, for Will Levis, a young quarterback, you got two weapons on the outside. You slide Traylon Burks to the end inside and now you have three guys that you can get the ball to and two running backs that can do everything from a running standpoint and also receiving standpoint. Now a lot of fans took to X or whatever it is and started posting all right Tennessee Titans you're now going to give Calvin Ridley he'll be 30 this year this huge contract but you escorted AJ Brown out the door at the age of 24 and allowed the Eagles to give him the big contract. Different general managers, different regimes, di things are done differently. Maybe Rand Carthon looks at it as like, hey, we need a guy like A.J. Brown, so let's go out there and get Calvin Ridley and pay him the bucks because we, the, we have to get him away from Jacksonville, a division opponent that now strengthens their team. So I look at this as a nice upgrade for them from the receiver room. Derrick Henry, we knew at the end of last season that that was going to be his last time as a Tennessee Titan. He grabbed the microphone in their last home game and addressed the crowd. So I think for Titans fans, for people there, you kind of come to terms with the fact of, all right, Derrick Henry's not there. Who's going to be the new guys? And I think Calvin Ridley is a big piece for them offensively to see what they can get out of Will Levison. This is the opportunity. Your quarterback's on a rookie contract. Pay the guys around him. And, Shrek, something I think you can get into is we look at this and we're like, wow, this is crazy. Why? Why would Calvin Ridley go to the Tennessee Titans? There's no connection pieces there. It can't be. Great way to serve me up, Jay. There is a connective <laughs> tissue sure. here. Uh, great teammate. This is awesome. First of all, how, how in are they, uh, are, are they in on Will Levis? Last year at this time, Will mm. Levis was a draft prospect. Mm -hmm. We were saying, it's a little different. He's eating bananas with peels on him. He's having mayonnaise <laughs> and coffee, and he stunk last year at Kentucky compared to the year before. What's going on with this guy? Falls all the way to the second round. You fast forward a year. They're all in on Will Levis, not only so much on surrounding him with all this talent on offense, but they went out and they hired an offensive coach, yep. Brian Callahan. So Brian Callahan, here's the connective tissue. Brian Callahan comes from Cincinnati, where he was the offensive coordinator and worked with Joe Burrow, right? Calvin Ridley last year was in Jacksonville. His offensive coordinator was Press Taylor. Mm -hmm. Press Taylor, the little brother of Zach Taylor who is the head coach mm. in Cincinnati with Brian Callahan. So obviously there's conversations about what we got going on here in this Jacksonville offense with Brian. The wide receivers coach in Jacksonville last year is a guy named Nick Holes. Nick Holes worked with Calvin Ridley, worked with Zay Jones, worked with Christian Kirk. Great relationship. Who's the offensive coordinator in Tennessee right now? Z Callahan's the head coach. Nick Holes is the offensive coordinator. Oh. So the position coach for Calvin Ridley last year is now the offensive coordinator of the Tennessee Titans. So he didn't get involved until the money started getting close, but you better believe, once that legal tampering mm. window opened, phone lines opened up, text started going, and it was crazy because you have Press Taylor, who's his current offensive coordinator at Jacksonville, trying to bring him back with the Jacksonville guys. <laughs> then you've got almost like the sabotage from my old brethren. Now you're there in the division and you're going to steal him? They stole him, so now it's Callahan and Press and Nick Holes. They get Calvin Ridley, and it's it's all of a sudden this really exciting offense. When a year ago, we didn't even know what the heck was going on in Tennessee, mm -hmm. and we were talking about Malik Willis or Ryan Tannehill, who's going to be the guy. True. They already have a quarterback now, and they feel like they're pretty equipped to compete. Yeah, I mean, great points from from all of you guys. Um, I love the pickup. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know what the Tennessee Titans are are, are, are saying right now. Will we're doing everything possible to keep talent around you yep. so you can be successful. And adding another top-tier receiver like Calvin, the sky's the limit for him.
you know, you already have DeAndre Hopkins over there who is a bona fide number one receiver who's now his job may become who who uh, may become a, uh, became a lot easier now Very true not having to uh, deal with so many double coverages yep. anymore um, and the king I know we talked about um, <laughs> the, the the departure of him it's only one Derrick Henry mm. I know they added t uh, Tony uh, to the uh, to their roster but it's hard to replace Oof. a six four running back 200 however many pounds he is <laughs> He can stiff arm your whole team, run through your house, uh, take everything out of the kitchen. It's hard to replace a guy uh, that uh, uh, that have the statue of a Derrick Henry. Yeah. But um, I love what Tennessee is doing right now with the additions that they're uh, making to their team and also helping their young quarterback as much as they can. Do they need a corner? Ah, uh, they may. I haven't they looked. They need at, a safety. I haven't looked. Oh, they may. They, they need that. a guy that's willing to do both. <laughs> Let me ask you: If you have a guy like Derrick Henry on your team, though. You feel this obligation, obviously, he's Derrick Henry, to run an offense through him, to make sure you're handing the ball off to him however many times Derrick Henry needs, and there is a, a legitimate bind and commitment to the run game. If you let him walk away, which is sad, and it was weird to see him go and to address the crowd that way, does it free up Rand Carthon, mm -hmm. the new GM, the one-year-old GM, for example, the freedom to say, now this is what I need my team to look like? Because until Derrick Henry was gone, that team was always going to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You started to see it last year where his his usage went down, where now he's splitting time and it's kind of 50-50 almost with Tajay Spears. And I think it just builds in this new found offense. Like Peter said, Brian Callahan now is the head coach there. He's going to run an offense that he sees fit. And now you look at Tajay Spears and Tony Pollard. The difference was when Derrick Henry was in the game, you would expect their offense to be one way. When Tajay Spears got in the game, all right, now they're moving to this type of offense. With now Pollard and Spears, you don't know what they're going to do. Both of those guys are great receivers out of the backfield, and they can both run between the tackles. So I think it adds, adds some complexity to their offense. And also, Will Levis can run as well. So it does something a little bit different mm -hmm. than, to your point, just kind of an old-school smash mouth where Derrick Henry put the team on his back for about the last six years and mm -hmm. getting them to the playoffs, to the AFC Championship game. So it's sad to see that because you know I had a ton of success. It's within the division, which is interesting. Like, Ridley mm -hmm. going to Tennessee, now it's a zero-sum game. So we're taking your best wide receiver from Good point. You and we're adding him to here. It's a major blow to Jacksonville. That's how I look at it. I said it yesterday. Yeah. I don't know if I'm in the you, – you covered all these guys, and so mm -hmm. you did you for a lot of these. I think Calvin Ridley is awesome. Like, I think Calvin no Ridley is 1,000 yards, potentially 100 catches. No doubt. Wrong in, in treating him in that caliber. He no. was so good in Atlanta. No, you're not wrong at all. And he had 1,000 yards in, in Atlanta, had a coming off a 1,000-yard year last year. So it's exciting to see what he's going to be able to do in that offense.